All right, hello guys. How's it going? In today's video, we're going to be talking about the tropics, where we have a new tropical disturbance there in the Gulf of Mexico. But also, we do have to talk about Major Hurricane Larry, which is expected to possibly impact Canada. So we're going to be talking about all those things within this video. Now be sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. For today's comment of the day, I would like to know, when do you think our next tropical disturbance is going to be uh, developing in the Atlantic Ocean? Let me know in the comments down below when you think that'll be, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Let's get straight into this video, and we're taking a look at the five-day graphical tropical weather outlook here. And as you can see, we have our disturbance there that's expected to cross over Florida, possibly impacting Georgia. Uh, and maybe some of the other East Coast states along its path. We also have Larry just chilling out there uh, as a major hurricane, expected to generally be heading in a kind of towards the west, but then curve to the north, eventually impacting areas like Newfoundland and Nova Scotia, uh, possibly even directly. So we're going to be talking about all those things later on, the impacts for Canada, uh, but we're also going to talk about the impacts for this disturbance down there for the southeast as well. Uh, although they will be minimal, we're still going to talk about it because minimal impacts are still impacts. Let's go ahead and take a look at the percent chance on this disturbance there in the Gulf. And we have a 30% chance of development. I think this one will probably be uh, just a disturbance at that. So basically an area of thunderstorms that are kind of windy, uh, or it could even be a tropical depression, uh, which would be a little bit more impactful, but either way, the impact should be pretty minimal, but still uh, definitely impactful to say the least. Let's take a look at the cone forecast for Hurricane Larry. So obviously the United States has been rolled out. There could be some, you know, I don't know, some rough surf, I guess, along the East Coast. But for the most part, it seems like Newfoundland here uh, has the best chance at seeing impacts, possibly even direct impacts. Any Anything within the white cone uh, basically the low pressure system that is Hurricane Larry could cross directly over anywhere within that white cone. Uh, so we see there is the potential for a direct impact, but if it's offshore, it would still bring some pretty uh, nasty impacts as it will still be a hurricane as it's right next to Newfoundland there. Here's some of those spaghetti models, and we're taking a look here at the GEFS model here. And as you can see, uh, the mean average is just offshore of, of Newfoundland here, but we do have plenty of those spaghetti models going onshore of Newfoundland as well. Uh, a lot of these have this later on impacting Greenland or Iceland or heading back towards Europe as a much weaker storm. So there's many options on the table after that. You can tell that we have pretty high confidence on where this one is going to go, basically up until the point where it either hits Newfoundland or it's offshore of Newfoundland, and then it really just spreads out after that point, literally anywhere from north uh, to south, it can go and anywhere in between there. Um, so definitely a big uh, amount of options here where this one can go after that point. Now what we're going to do in a moment is move on, take a look at our European ensemble model, Canadian model, uh, and then the individual models. And we'll take a look at some of the satellite imagery for this one, the intensity guidance as well. Then we're going to start talking about impacts and then we're going to move on, talk about the new invest and what impacts that one could bring, especially to Florida, but some of the other Southeast states as well. All right, now here is that European ensemble model. And as you can see, this one has a little bit of a stronger low pressure system pretty consistently all the way through the late portion of the spaghetti models um, track. But we do see that this one has less direct impacts to Newfoundland there. Uh, but the mean average is a lot closer to the coast of Newfoundland. So that's going to bring those nasty impacts on shore for the most part. The Canadian model is a little bit more all over the place. Um, but this one also has the mean average very close uh, to the to the shoreline there of, of Newfoundland. It has a few of those individual spaghetti models going on shore of Newfoundland as well, uh, which again would be the most impactful solution at this point. Now, as we take a look at these individual models, you can tell that there is a couple that bring this, again, directly on shore of Newfoundland, but quite a few of these take this pretty far away from Newfoundland. Maybe we can hope for that. Maybe that is an option on the table right now. Uh, but again, the impacts seem like they're going to head towards Greenland or Iceland after, which is pretty interesting as well. Here's the current satellite imagery, and obviously it's a very nasty storm, as you can tell. Uh, it just has that look of an intensifying hurricane. Very huge eye. We talked about that uh, before, but I mean, massive, massive eye on this one. Um, one of the biggest ones I've seen, at least in a while. Um, definitely a nasty storm at this point. The good news is, though, as we're taking a look at the intensity 
guidance uh, it is expected to weaken quite a bit. There is a few models that keep it up above that Category 2 status in the Category 3 range all the way up until it's basically hitting Newfoundland. But a majority here keep this one on kind of a descending slope here towards Category 2 or even Category 1 status by time it is hitting or nearing Newfoundland. That's all we can hope for is that it weakens as much as possible before bringing those direct land impacts now, as we talk about the impacts, we're obviously going to use the best and most accurate model in the world, the Canadian model, which is widely regarded as the best model in the world. That's a joke. Of course, it is the worst model in the world. Well, that might be an exaggeration, but we're going to use the European model, the actual best model in the world. Uh, and as you can see, this one has a much stronger low pressure system there, but it is offshore of Newfoundland, but just close enough to bring those very in, you know, strong impacts at this point. We have a 965 millibar low pressure system, which is a stronger one to say the least. Uh, but the rainfall, you know, we can range anywhere from, uh, we're going to be using millimeters, but uh, it, it, anywhere in the greens here, we're taking a look at uh, 2.5 to 12.5 uh, millimeters there. Uh, within the blues, 12.5 to 22.5. Uh, the yellows are going to be anywhere from about 25 to 50. And then the reds are going to be 50 to 100. Uh, and you can see that actually the west coast of Newfoundland gets the most there, you know, ranging in the in the in the 50s, 60s, 70s, even 80s up there. Uh, and as far as wind, um, we can see that if you're anywhere in the blues, you're looking at about 36 to 68 kilometers per hour. Uh, and then anywhere in the greens are going to be 68 to almost 100 kilometers per hour. So we get a little bit more impactful there, obviously. And then there is some oranges and reds that are very close to the east coast of Newfoundland there. That is where we have those 100 plus amounts uh, with the gusts. This is the gusts, by the way. So this definitely would bring some impactful windiness for these regions. Now, what we're going to do is move on real quick, and we're just going to talk about the impacts for Florida with that uh, invest that is down there in the Gulf of Mexico. All right, now here we are taking a look at the spaghetti model guidance and as you can see these ones have it ranging all over the place but i really am siding with the national hurricane center here that it's generally going to head towards the northeasterly direction towards the panhandle or what i like to call the armpit of florida that's not an insult last time i called it that people got insulted the reason i call it that is because it kind of looks like the armpit of africa which they don't consider that to be a, a, an insult i don't think i think that's actually what they refer to that area as in africa it really reminds me of that so i call it the armpit of, of florida that is not <laughs> meant to be an insult in any way, uh, and it's mostly because it looks like an armpit. Uh, here is the intensity guidance, and as you can see, only one takes it to tropical storm status, but it rapidly uh, loses that intensity right after that point. But it seems like the majority here keep this underneath tropical storm status, and I would say maybe tropical depression on those top half models. So I'd say there's about a 50-50 shot of this one becoming a tropical depression, uh, but Maybe even, you know, 60, 40, 60 being just a disturbance, 40 being depression. I, I don't think it's going to matter too much. I think the impacts are going to be pretty minimal. As we take a look at the rainfall here, uh, we're expecting anywhere from an inch to maybe four inches of rainfall here for, again, the armpit of Africa, pff, armpit of Florida, not the armpit of Africa. Armpit of Florida, we see generally those one to three to four inch amounts there, which is going to be pretty impactful. Those yellows spanning pretty far into Georgia and Florida, those are going to be uh, one inch amounts. So that, you know, you guys are pretty used to it, but uh, that is a little bit more impactful um, than your typical storm. We see that there will be, as far as gusts go here, anywhere from about 34 to 50 mile per hour gusts, but generally it's going to be on the much lower end than that. Um, anywhere onshore of Florida, it looks like offshore, we could get about 40 plus mile per hour gusts, but uh, onshore, it looks like we're going to have generally around 35, maybe right on the east coastline there, north of Tampa. That seems to be uh, the general uh, gist of what these models are calling for at this point. So anyway, for our confidence tab today, we're at a 5 out of 6 because I feel like we've been really open with what the impacts could look like. Uh, I feel pretty confident that this storm is going to be much weaker. Uh, Larry is going to be probably a 1 or a 2 by the time it's bringing impacts to Newfoundland, hopefully lower. For today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, do you think September will overall be a colder or a warmer month? And Ethan Galeski said, I think September will go down as mostly a cooler month because of constant cold fronts in the east. And I think that is a possibility. Yesterday, we talked about a very low confidence, um, more speculative 
uh, topic of how I think September could go down as a colder month if the GFS is correct, but there's equally as many models saying, look, it's going to be very hot at the end. So we talked about that mostly for entertainment purposes. Um, I think it is possible that we have pretty consistent cold fronts if the GFS solution is correct. For today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, John Ben Benick, James Wade, Dovey Nagel, Literally Pan, and Donna Carnes. Alongside our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Kudalasa, Cat Bite, Charles Stinnett, Sidney Klein, Mark J, Luke Flago, Gary, Sean Colisi, Dwight Balin, and Steven Grenenthal. If you would like to be a part of this very exciting Patreon screen of the day, you can do so by joining our Patreon page today. That's going to be in the description and in the pinned comments down below. I would also like to thank our channel members where we have two new members, but our Weather Top Dogs, Hair Farms 1, Cat Bite, Steven Fan, and Jeremy Cox. If you'd like to join this channel membership, by the way, I haven't advertised this in a while. I did a live stream for Ida a few days ago, maybe even almost a week now. Uh, and a lot of you joined the channel membership. So if you'd like to join that, it's going to be next to the subscribe button down below. I plan on bringing some content for you guys. Uh, so feel free to join that and end up on this channel member end screen of the day. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. I will see you guys in the next video.